The word reboot is kind of a dirty word these days. Between the fact that people will blame creators for just rehashing old ideas instead of coming up with new ones, and the fact that people are afraid, usually with good reason, that the new version of their favorite show or movie just won't live up to the old, reboots of anything can be looked down upon or even flat out hated. But what exactly is the reason for that? Why do people hate reboots, and what can be done to fix them? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am your ever-friendly poker prof, and welcome back to Fascinating Fiction. But we're doing things a bit differently today. Normally, when you come to watch this show, I like to talk about different forms of media. I basically do a mixture of review content from having watched something for the first time, or I'm deep diving into something that I'm familiar with and wanted to highlight what makes that form of media special. This time around, I'm wanting to do a bit more of an actual video essay bit. It's something I've been wanting to do a bit more often, talking about how the world of media works, how it's used, and what are some of the things that I see for the reasons of their existence, or in the case of today's subject, have a problem with. So with that said, reboots. Now, when it comes to reboots, we actually have two different camps that we'll really be talking about when it comes to the concept. Franchise reboots and true reboots. Franchise reboots are the reboots that will happen once the series is over and the creators are wanting to do a new version of things. Think shows like My Little Pony, The Transformers, and The Ninja Turtles. Once the old shows or movies are over, they decide to go on to the next one. This is usually because the people behind these franchises are all about making toys to sell to kids, so constantly reworking your characters is a wonderful way to do this. These are usually low-stakes shows that really won't hit on many people's radars, though you'll get the occasional big hit once in a while, like what happened with Friendship is Magic from the My Little Pony side of things. True reboots, on the other hand, are usually what people think about when they hear the word reboot. This is when a series or franchise hasn't been used for a while, and then they suddenly announce a new version is going to be airing next Sunday at your locally available cartoon station or streaming service. There are two reasons these reboots usually happen. The first is usually some kind of company will get a hold of the rights to the original content and thought that they could make a quick buck by bringing back something nostalgic for audiences. The second reason, though rarer, is that a fan of the original content grew up loving the franchise and is now old enough to be a part of it, wanting to bring back a new version of it to the world for the next generation. But why do some people hate reboots, especially the true ones, so much? More content is more content, and considering some franchises never see the light of day again once they're over, we should be happy to see some of them return, right? Well, it's not really that easy for a multitude of reasons. The first reason why reboots have such a hard time actually comes down to the audience itself. The problem that true reboots often face will be that the audience that would remember it the most adults who might not have the time, money, or energy to watch their new reboot, aren't always going to be the ones who are willing to support it. A lot of people have grown up since that era where their favorite franchise was around to enjoy, and a combination of tastes, lifestyle, and even availability has changed. So, for example, seeing Popeye do his cartoony antics back in his heyday doesn't exactly hit the same in the year of 2023. And in the case of things like cartoons, if you can't get the attention of the old audience and aren't able to find a new one, then your new reboot is dead in the water. Of course, getting over that hurdle is just the first real issue. The second is a matter of tone. A lot of reboots like to sell themselves as the darker, edgier, more modern version of your favorite show back from your childhood. It's an attempt by the creators to show that your favorite franchise has grown up just like you have. This can lead to many choices being taken for the sole desire to become more mature, and because of that it can take away from what made the show so popular in the first place. The reverse of this can also be true where you get instances of franchises that were originally aimed at an older audience with more mature themes, and yet the people who owned the franchise decided to make the tone sillier or more childlike to appeal to a new generation. A good example here would be Riverdale, a series based on the goofy Archie comics that have been around for decades, and yet the actual show is dark, 
brooding, and what goofiness it does have plays into that aspect. Seriously, this show has a character who is described as having the serial killer gene as part of their biology that makes them go out to commit murder. Hey kids, wanna see a dead body? Third up in the reasons why reboots might suffer comes down to how much of the original content actually remains from the original source, and how this coincides with why the reboot was made in the first place. We've seen it a lot with the live-action Disney reboots, where little, if anything, is changed from the original, which makes you question why they were even made in the first place when the answer wasn't just money. There's no point in watching the reboot of Beauty and the Beast, for example, since nothing the live-action movie does is anything more than just saying, we used real humans instead of cartoons, and ignores the work, effort, and sheer artistry of the original movie. Even the one live-action movie from Disney that I do think worked, Maleficent, ran into the problem of telling the same story again without changing enough of it to help distinguish it from the original. But if there's one big reason I'd really have to say that drives the most hatred when it comes to reboots, comes down to the matter of respect both for the original source material and the audience. There are so many instances of reboots either making fun of the original concept, ignoring what made the original so enjoyable for so many fans, or in some cases just flat out insults the audience of the original work. We see this for shows like Velma, where it spends so much of its time being mean-spirited and cruel that it has nothing to do with the Scooby-Doo characters we're so familiar with. We've seen this with shows like Teen Titans, Titans Go, which have openly mocked both the original show that it was based off of, while also calling out its audience for liking the original better than them. We see this with Reboot The Guardian Code, where almost everything from the original source material is completely ignored in a favor of doing a show that mimicked other franchises like Power Rangers and Code Lyoko in a poor attempt to make a quick buck. An audience can tell when something is done with earnest desire to respect respect and pay tribute to the original, and they can tell when that respect is lacking. So with that all said and the many pitfalls that reboots can fall into, how do you make a good reboot? Well, it's not exactly easy considering all the issues I've discussed before, but there are some things that I feel really need to be brought into focus in making a good reboot, and I'll do my best to point out the magical mix that can bring a good one to life. Theme is perhaps the major important building block to making sure people flock to your reboot. Taking what is normally a kid's show and suddenly making it to a hard, edgy, super serious movie or series can work, but it so rarely does and people forget that just because something is a kid's cartoon, that doesn't mean they can't tackle heavy or serious subjects that some adult films will never even go near to. For this instance, let's take the Netflix show Carmen Sandiego, being a reimagining reboot of the franchise of the same name that hasn't really been seen or thought of much since the 90s. In the original content, she's just a master thief and villain, someone there to encourage either the player for the games or the cast for the cartoon to try and catch her to return the stolen items. Here, Carmen is an orphan, someone raised by the organization Vile to do their dirty work, only deciding to work against them thanks to a chance encounter. These are not light elements that you would normally see in a show aimed at kids, but it works here because the show treats the subject material seriously while also remembering the origins that it came from. Carmen is still a master thief that becomes known the world over, but she's instead stealing from the villains. The things that most people would know about Carmen's series, the villainous group Vile, the law enforcement group Acme, and the show's history of trying to teach their audience about geography is all still here. They know what the theme is and are playing to those strengths. But as you might have figured out by how I detailed Comrade's series there, it's more than just themes. Acknowledging what came before is also important, though this is perhaps the hardest part of getting any reboot right. Let's take a look at one of the shows that did it best in the DuckTales 2017 reboot. 
One of the biggest things about this particular cartoon is that a lot of their nods to the past, especially earlier on in the series, was a blink and you'd miss it kind of situation. Things like Scrooge's Garage having a robot head of one of the characters from the original cartoon, or the Golden Sun coin from the same kind of cartoon are exceptionally common. These were things that were cool little easter eggs that the entire show didn't stop dead and point out to the audience to say, hey, look, here's something we had in the previous show, like the creators were expecting to be pat on the back for including it in the first place. Instead, it was used for world building, to craft stories for the show to use in its central plots. This is why one of the major driving plots of the initial first season of the show is finding the triplet's mother, because she was a character that existed in the original comics that gave life to Scrooge and the rest of the McDuck family, and this reboot used that history to craft an interesting and engaging story. And really, let's be entirely honest, it's that last bit that's perhaps the biggest and most important thing to keep in mind for anything you reboot. The story, the characters, and the world itself that they're interacting in. They have to be done with careful thought and planning. It's more important to figure out what the show is going to say and why it's saying it than anything else. Doctor Who shows this incredibly well when it rebooted itself after a 16 year gap. Even if fans will argue which Doctor is best, or who had the most interesting stories, or so on and so forth, it cannot be denied that the Ninth Doctor helped bring the series back by having a full idea of what they wanted to do from the start. It was with this that they were able to push forward the idea of the Doctor and, while there are some complaints about how the tenure of the Ninth Doctor ended, it cannot be denied that it helped revitalize a series that is still going on to this day. Now, I could continue going on about all the different do's and don'ts of reboots for a while, but even for all that I've said and all the examples I've given, that doesn't necessarily mean things are going to be successful at the end of the day. For all the things that I pointed out about Riverdale or Teen Titans Go, both of these shows are still running, while DuckTales, something I consider to be one of the best reboots of all time, ended with only three seasons. Part of this comes down from the companies that owns these franchises and what's done with them. Disney is well known for only having their shows getting enough episodes to get into syndication for cable television, and then they usually end the series afterwards. Cartoon Network, on the other hand, will let a show run on for as long as it makes them money, as we've seen this before with other shows that have gone beyond what you would think they would normally allow. This isn't even considering how any of these companies advertise their shows, where they make them available, or what they do to encourage viewership. But even having said that, there's going to be a legacy that each of these shows are going to have. Some will be remembered for giving a new life to an old idea, allowing us to have new adventures, seeing new versions of old characters, and even giving hope for more in the future. Others will be hated, viewed as something that could never live up to the original source, and at worst have ruined the good names of the franchises that were loved before. Regardless of how it all turns out, reboots are a core part of how we make media, and we're always going to see someone out there wanting to take a new crack at an old idea. Well then, I hope you all enjoyed this little switch up from how we normally do things. I've kind of been wanting to talk about stuff like this for a while now, not focusing on any real review like I have been, but talking about a concept of media as a whole. I've got a few more ideas like this to talk about, and I'll probably sprinkle them here and there between normal episodes of Fascinating Fiction. If you'd like me to talk about this stuff again, please be sure to tell me. I'd be more than willing to include this stuff more often. With all that said, I hope I've done a good job to entertain you, and I'll do my best to do so again in the future. Hopefully you'll follow along with my content by subscribing and doing all those other things that gives us YouTubers life. If you wish to support me a bit more, I do have a Patreon where you can get access to bonus content. But until next time, stay frosty. Mm -hmm.